Okay, this is our um, plan for our thriller film. It's called uh, Pre-Recorded. At the moment it could possibly change, depending on if we have a better idea or not. Um, first was going to be something about the uh, film ideas that we had. Um, our first idea was uh, a schoolboy, um, age 16 to 17, so six four years, um, would be seen attached to a radiator through like a chain in a radiator in a attached to a radiator in a warehouse type area. Um, this uh, chain after he wakes up realizing that it was just a dream and then it uh, goes to a point where he's uh, going to school normally and starts to run away and ends up in the same situation. Uh, our idea number two is he's a schoolboy is on his way to the shop so again it's kind of like the same 16, 17 age limit. Um, he goes to see what's going on and uh, it's kind of like peripheral vision because he sees something a bit suspicious and ends up in a warehouse tied to uh, some kind of metal device. So a lot of entrapment is kind of in these ideas and it all, all kind of revolves around them. And our third idea is a boy is actually filming his own film project with his own camera. This kind of adds like a good dynamic for different camera angles that we could use. Uh, having it so that the camera angle is based on his camera movement uh, that he does himself and um, obviously it uh, goes to a true point of someone sneaking up on him, attacking him and ending up again in a warehouse trapped in some sort of a awful situation. We chose this idea because it was different to obviously the ones before where it's like a generic thriller film where you're being like chased or followed or you see something and we thought it would give like different and up to the three connections and stuff. Hey, the locations of the potential ideas. Um, we got first location, which is in Crick, and we were going to revolve first idea around this area. So we use the playing field as the warehouse. We use Connor's house because it's nearby. Um, and we sort of did the same on the second idea. This time, we had Chicks' house. Um, there's the, the shop. This is the alleyway the guy is going to walk down. Um, and he wakes up from this area here. Uh, third idea was in East Haddon. That's my house. Um, down here, there's where the person's going to film himself. Um, there's a little stream down the side here which you can't quite see because of the trees. Um, so, might add some thriller conventions to the idea. Um, so, the actual chosen idea. The chosen idea we decided to go for was the, uh, the third option of um, the camera being uh, his camera at some intervals in time. We'd switch it obviously with uh, camera angles that we'd take ourselves to make sure to get uh, such things as the 180 degree rule and match and action uh, shot reverse shot because you can't, you, we wouldn't really be able to do that with just his point of view camera unless we did some crazy things that you would never actually do in a real life situation and um, we definitely tried to incorporate different things like um, at some point we'll be walking down the stairs and uh, the stairs that we're kind of using are like barred so that will represent the bars and it's just kind of little creative ways of adding these through conventions rather than just using them as uh, just average bars that you'd find in like a jail cell or something. So our final location, we're going to mix the two locations together. So we've got Connor's house, where he would love to do some filming in there. And then we're going to East Haddon, where we'll film down this long stretch here. So we'll kind of uh, make it so you see him walking out of the door area and we'll just kind of like transition it so he'll be walking around a corner and you won't necessarily be able to see what's around the corner. So when he turns in, there won't really be any uh, difference to the scenery that people will notice because there isn't really the house is very good for one aspect of the film but this location is better for uh, the second aspect that we're planning on so we'll try and integrate them together. The locations are also really really like remote like the villages there's not a lot of people around and it will just add 
think that reflects to the thriller. It's like mysterious. Uh, the script doesn't have um, much dialogue in it because obviously there's only really one character being involved. But uh, just uh, this script kind of adds the um, stage directions that we'll use uh, for the different um, actions that we we'll do. So he'll be um, picking up his camera, picking up his hoodie, uh, walking out the door. He'll say a couple of lines to himself, uh, kind of maybe just checking that the camera's right, or um, even at some point shouting to the man behind him as one he notices him. And then obviously when he's in the warehouse at the end, kind of screaming and being like wondering where he is. The next thing is the character profiles. Uh, our first is acted by Connor Gerard, which is the boy filming himself. Uh, it's like a schoolboy who's interested in like technology, and we feel like if he's independent, it'll Present like more that he's isolated and there's no one around him, and I'd like create more tension. So no one can help him, sort of thing. No. And our second character is acted by Jordan. Uh, he'll be in a black tracksuit, he'll be the antagonist. Uh, he's quite sneaky, but he's also like, very, very strong. I feel this like presents a villain. Kind of like a threat to um, the quite uh, isolating character. So the props and costumes that we decided to use, um, we don't have any pictures of them at the moment because we're still uh, trying to gather them together. Uh, but the props we're using uh, the secondary camera, obviously, because we will be f um, filming from the camera's point of view, where we won't necessarily need. A second camera in the shot, but when we're doing the other views, such as um, an overhead view of him walking about with the camera, we will need that second camera. We film from just the one camera, though. Yeah, we'll film from just the one camera, and when it is actually going to the, his point of view camera, we'll just swap them out. So uh, the chain, obviously, to use um, during his uh, capture scene where he's found uh, in the warehouse. And a hoodie, just because he picks it up uh, halfway through, just to add like uh, some sort of like tension, almost. So it shows going outside. Yeah. yeah. Costumes. Uh, the main character costume will be a white t-shirt, blue jeans, dark blue hoodie. Um, so it shows like a normal teenager boy. Um, so nothing through the convention to do with that. The antagonist costume be black jumper, black shoes, dark green moleskin jeans, and a black gas mask. So you won't actually be able to see the person's face, which will create more scarcity of the film. Uh, the green moleskin jeans will show like him blending in with the surroundings, so you won't see him as much. And yeah. So that's the storyboard that we've got at the moment. It just shows most of the uh, the different kind of camera angles that we're going for. There's quite a few mid shots. We've uh, tried to do quite like uh, a reverse shot almost, and there's just different um, tried to include long shots to have most of the scenery showing because uh, a kind of like isolated feel, like he's alone in the area, and then cut into a long shot to show that he's actually not alone in the area. And then obviously we have the different um, shots of him actually using the camera, which mainly the start and the end photo. This is our shot list, and we've obviously got a range of shot types with like mid shot, long shot, overhead shot. Um, there's not a lot of health and safety issues with, no, with the shots at the very least. We're not planning on going very high up with the shots, we're all kind of keeping it on one sort of um, level. There may be sort of like um, downward and upward shots, but in terms of like very high uh, surrounding shots, we won't be planning on using many of them, so we won't need like a ladder or anything. Uh, There's a uh, pre-production shot list, so this does include any uh, health and safety issues that we may have just with um, moving around and filming, so obviously if we're um, going to be using stairs and to be careful not to fall down them, uh, as silly as it may sound, it is a, uh, an issue that could present itself. Um, when using um, 
certain t uh, lighting uh, as a contingency, we have different days planned to um, kind of use to our advantage because obviously it gets uh, darker much quicker and we want to be filming mainly in light. Uh, obviously the inside scenes we may be able to use uh, artificial light at those points and can be done at any given time but in terms of outside scenes which is the majority of the film we will have to um, make sure there are cons contingency days that we can use in case uh, it gets dark too quickly. And that is the end of our presentation. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Why are you deciding to keep the shots on the show one level? Um, mainly just to keep it kind of like not too complex because the uh, the story is very um, he's on he's on very like single level like he's on his own he doesn't have like he's not very popular and obviously he wouldn't have all these crazy shots going around and it kind of like just focuses in on that character not very much the wide scene we have really high shots he'll be showing much of the scenery around him I think we just want to focus mainly on that one character get and show his like adventure and like the isolation that he is. Basically thing in our be like a more heavy thing to it. Anybody else?